Representing our data graphically by creating charts is one of the important tasks we perform in Excel. But today I want to show you how to take our charts to a whole different horizon by customizing it to the occasion and the industry. For this company selling plush toys, Valentine's Day is an important occasion and they sell lots of teddy bears. So I customized this bar chart for plush toy sales on Valentine's Day like this. The number of hearts we see reflects the percentage difference between actual sales and target. Positive numbers being to the right and negative to the left. I could change the beautiful teddy bear by clicking on the Valentine's Day logo. My title is also dynamic. While it says Plush Toy 2014 Sales, if I click on the Spin button, I'm switching to another year sales. In this project, I build my Valentine's chart from scratch. I start by preparing my data for each year using a VLOOKUP and a MATCH function. I create a dynamic label and a conditional formatting data bar. I then start creating my Valentine's chart using an IF function, a ROUND function, and a REPEAT function. Along the way, we talk about fonts, symbols, and custom formats. I will then add a control that changes my data to another year and link it to a cell in the source data sheet. I will then create my teddy bear pictures catalog using defined names, VLOOKUP, RIND BETWEEN, indirect functions. With a very simple VBA code, I link the picture catalog to the logo. Finally, I'll be adding a nice background and apply some protection. This is more than just a tutorial. It's an all-you-can-eat Excel buffet. You can download the start file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. So let's see how we build our Valentine's Day chart from ground up in Excel. This is my start file. I'm in the worksheet named Story. And in column A, I have a list of months. In column B, I have some numbers representing the target of sales for a plush toys company. And in columns J to O, I do have the actual sales for five years from 2014 through 2018. In order to represent the values graphically for each year and compare the difference between the actual and the target, I need to bring the actual sales in column C. I'll be looking at the month, month of January, and if we need to extract the values for 2014, then we need to extract values from column K. And to do this, I'll be using a VLOOKUP function. So I'm selecting the entire range in column C, and from the perspective of this active cell, I start creating my VLOOKUP function equal VLOOKUP. And then when I hit tab, I'm reading the screen tip. It asks me for the lookup value, which means what are you looking for? I'm looking for January. And then I hit comma, where do you look for it? Where is your table array? My table array is this entire table and I select it. And because I'll be copying my function down, then I need to lock it so it doesn't change. So I hit the F4 key on my keyboard and it adds the dollar sign for me. Then I hit comma. The next argument is column index number, which simply means because we are looking at the actual values for 2014, then from this table array in red, I need values from the second column. But if the number in cell A2 changes and becomes, let's say, 2016, then in this case we need from the fourth column. That's what it means, the column index number. I could simply type 2 to represent 2014, but to make it dynamic, I want to find the ordinal position of 2014 in this entire range here at the top in the column headers of my table array. And to find the ordinal position, then I'll be using a match function. So I type match, and then I hit tab. What would you like to match? I want to match whatever I have in cell A2. I don't want A2 to change, so I lock it by hitting the F4 key, and then I hit comma. What's your lookup array? Where do you want to look for 2014? I select the column header, the top row. So if 2014 is selected, then it's the second one in this range. If 2015, it will be the third one, and so on. Because I'm copying down, I need to lock this range, so I hit F4. 
And then I hit comma, it asks me, are you looking at an exact match or less than or greater than? I'll be selecting a zero, which simply means an exact match. When I close the bracket, I'll be closing the bracket for the match function. And then I hit comma because I'm back to the VLOOKUP function. And when I hit comma, look at the bold argument range lookup, which simply means, are you looking at an exact match or an approximate match? I'm looking at an exact match. I could select false or simply type zero. I'm going to hit the tab key to select false, close the bracket. And when I hit control enter, I'll be populating the function in the entire range. My next step is to calculate the percentage difference. So I select the whole range in column D and I simply type equal sign and open bracket. I want to subtract the target from the actual sales. So I select C3 and then type a minus sign, click on B3, close the bracket, and then type a forward slash and click on B3 one more time. To populate this function, I hit control enter to return the percentage difference. When I hit control enter, if you see negative number, that means we did not hit the target. If you see positive number, that means we went above the target. And I was able to create this very simple setup. If I change the value in cell A2, let's say I type 2015, when I hit enter, all the numbers change and it's dynamic. My VLOOKUP function is extracting the corresponding actual sales from the corresponding column in the table array. Well, my next step is to create a dynamic label. And this dynamic label is a very simple formula using the joining operator. So I type an equal sign, and then in double quotation I say plush toys, and I type a space, I close the double quotation, type shift seven, the joining operator of Excel, and then we want to grab that number coming from cell A2. So I type another joining operator shift seven, and after that, I want to type the word sales, so I type it in double quotes. I leave a little space before sales to separate it from whatever comes from cell A2, and I type sales. Close the double quotes. When you hit enter, here is my dynamic label. Well, I want to format it to set it across my little list, so I select the cells from A1 to D1, and then I open the format cell dialog box control 1. On the alignment tab in the format cell dialog box, I click on the down arrow for horizontal alignment and select center across selection. When I hit OK, I would have centered my text created by a formula in the entire selected range. I could also click on the Home tab to center it vertically, up and down, and I can bump the font. Let's say I want to bump it to 16, and I can make it bold, and I can make it blue as well. My next step is to represent these values by creating a very simple chart. Well, I could go and create a chart by clicking on the Insert tab and select any type of chart I want, but I'm going to use another technique, which is a conditional formatting data bars. Because I want to create my data bar in column G, then I'm selecting all the range and I type an equal sign. I would like to grab the number in column D. So I click on column D and then populate my formula by hitting Control Enter. Now I would like to represent these values by a data bar, which is a conditional formatting. So I go to the Home tab, click on the down arrow for conditional formatting, and here are the data bars. We have two types of data bar, the gradient fill and the solid fill. I'll go and select the first one in the upper left corner under solid fill. When I do this, I would have created my data bar. To improve the appearance, I would like to hide these numbers, which requires managing the rule. So if I click on conditional formatting one more time and go to the very bottom to manage rule, when you click on manage rule, we have one single rule. So I click on edit to edit the rule and the edit formatting rule dialog box opens in this dialog box. I just need to check the box where it says show bar only. When I check it and hit OK twice, the numbers disappear and what remains are the data bars. So I finished part one of this project and my next step is to switch to another worksheet, the love worksheet, and create my Valentine's chart that will represent these numbers with a very special appearance. So I would like to switch to the other worksheet. I click on love. All what I did is that I adjusted the row height for rows number one and two, and I adjusted the column width for some of the columns, column D and column H. Let's go and create a list of months starting from F3. So I start by typing January. I type it abbreviated, not a problem. Hit Control Enter. Let's apply some formatting before dragging down. 
because when I apply the formatting, it will be inherited as a copy down. So let's say I would like to format it as Arial Rounded. So I change the font type to Arial Rounded. I change it to black, and I want to center it right and left and up and down. So I click on Middle Align, and I click on Center Align, and I would have adjusted my first entry. Now if I hover over the lower right corner, if you click and drag, Excel will be incrementing the month. So I click and drag until I reach December, and that's fine. Now I can expand a little bit or increase the height of my rows. So I'll be selecting rows number 3 down to 14. And I hover over the lower border. Keep an eye on the mouse pointer when it changes to a horizontal line and to opposing arrows. You can simply click and drag downwards a little bit to fill the entire window, and that's fine. After doing so, I would like to extract the numbers that represent the percentage difference from the story worksheet. I would like to extract the positive numbers from the story worksheet column D. I would like to extract them to the right side of column F if they are positive numbers, and I would like to extract them to the left side of column F if they are negative numbers. And because it depends upon a condition, I need to create an if function. It's a very simple conditional function. I'm selecting the whole range in column G, and I'll type equal if, and then I hit the tab key. What's your condition? My condition is in the story worksheet. If cell D3 in the story worksheet and look in the formula bar, it showed the name of the worksheet, followed by an exclamation mark, and then the cell reference. If D3 is greater than zero, then what would you like to do? I hit comma. In this case, I want D3. Otherwise, I hit comma, and then I, I don't want anything to appear in the cell. I don't want anything, which means I'll be typing double quote, double quote, which simply means nothing. Close the bracket, and to populate your function, you hit Control Enter. And here is my function. Let me create a similar function in column E for the negative numbers. So I select the range, and then I type the same exact function, equal if, and then I hit Tab. Click on the Story Worksheet, and when you click on the Story Worksheet, you select cell D3. And then I need a smaller than symbol, smaller than zero. If D3 is less than zero, what do you want? Then in this case, I want D3 one more time, and then I hit comma. If not, I don't need anything, so I type double quote, double quote, close the bracket to populate my function, control enter. So I was able to bring the positive and negative numbers. I need to select the two ranges simultaneously, so I press the control key and drag. And then I want to improve the appearance and format them as percentages. So number one, I'm going to reduce the font size a little bit. Let's make it 11. And then I would like to represent them as percentages. I can click on the percentage symbol or simply use the shortcut Control shift 5 And then I want to center my text. I can center it up and down. I can center it right and left. And now I need to adjust the column width for the two columns, E and G. So I press Ctrl and select ENG, and then double click on the border, and I would have adjusted the column width. I'll be changing the color later on, but I'll keep it that way for now. Now the important part of my project is to represent this number by a certain number of characters. I want to represent this number. If it's positive, on the right side. If it's negative, I want to represent it on the left side. So it's a conditional formula that says if the number in cell D3 in the story worksheet, if the number is above zero, then repeat whatever you have in D3. And on the other side, it will be the same formula if the number is less than zero. What would you like to repeat? I would like to repeat a certain character. So I'll be using a repeat function. But because this number is too small, 7%, which means 0.07, then I want to make it a little bigger by multiplying it by a factor, let it be 100. So if I multiply it by 100, it will become 7. If I repeat the character 7 times, so I'll see the same character being repeated for the same number I have in cell D3. I'll be using an if function. And because I want to repeat, I'll be repeating by using the repeat function. And because I want to increase the number and round it, so I'll be using a round function. I'll be combining the three functions together. Let's see how we do this. I'm selecting the entire range, and I'll type equal if, 
First of all, my condition. My condition is the same exact thing we created a while ago. I go to the story worksheet and click on cell D3. If cell D3 is greater than zero, then what would you like to do? Then in this case, I would like to repeat. So I'm using a repeat function. Look at my screen tip. I'm going to move this screen tip closer to the formula bar so you can follow in the formula bar. And the repeat function is REP. And look at this, it's the repeat function. I hit tab and REPT, that's the repeat function. And here are the arguments. What would you like to repeat? Well, I would like to repeat a certain character, which is capital Y, and I type it in double quotation. And then I hit comma. How many times would you like to repeat? I can simply say I want to repeat it seven times and I type seven, but I want to grab the number in cell D3 because I'll be repeating it for the same exact percentage of difference. So I say round and then I open bracket, round whatever comes from cell D3, round it but multiply it by 100 to make it above zero. And then I want to round it to a whole number, so I want to round it to an integer, so I type comma zero, which simply means the number of digits, it will be adjusted to a whole number. I'm rounding whatever comes from cell D3 after multiplying it by 100 to make it a bigger number, and then I round it to the integer or to a whole number. I close the bracket to the round function. Now I close the bracket to the repeat function, and I'm back to my logical if function. If D3 is greater than 0, then the value if true is to repeat. What if it's not greater than 0? So I hit comma, and right now I'm in the value if false, and the value if false is nothing. If it's not greater than 0, then in this case I don't want anything, so I type double quote, double quote, and close the bracket. Let's populate our function by hitting control enter, and that works fine. So for the 7, I have 7 occurrences of y, for the 3, I have 3 occurrences of y, and so on, and that's wonderful. You might be asking, why letter y? I'm going to explain that in few seconds, but let me create the other function if the values are below 0%. So I select the numbers. If we do not achieve the target, then in this case, I get a negative result for the percentage of difference. I want to create the same function with a very little modification. I'll type an equal sign, equal if, and then I hit tab. Click on the story worksheet, and then click on D3, and say, if it is less than zero, then what would you like to do? Well, I would like to repeat R-E-P-T, and then I hit tab. What would you like to repeat? I want to repeat letter Y double quote, capital Y, and double quote, and then come. What's the number of times? Look at the screen tip. What's the number of times? The number of times is to round up this number after multiplying it by 100. So it becomes 7, and then I'll take the integer part in case I have any decimal. I want to exclude them. So I'm going to use the round function. So I type round and then I hit tab. What would you like to round? I want to round D3. After multiplying it by 100, I want to round it to a whole number. So I type comma zero. I close the bracket for the round function, and then I close the bracket for the repeat function. Now if I type a comma, I'll be in the value if false. What would you like to do if your condition is not met? I don't want anything, double quote, double quote, and then I close bracket. You know, if I hit enter right now, I'm going to get a value error. Let's hit Control Enter to populate, and I'm getting a value error. Let me put my function in the edit mode one more time. The reason for this error is that the repeat function cannot use a negative number returned by these percentages, which are negative numbers. So what I need to do is very simple. I click before the round function, and I type minus. Minus of a negative becomes positive. Now, if I want to populate my function by hitting Control Enter, I'll be getting the right result. For the minus 5, I'm getting 5 y's on the left side of column F, and that's wonderful. All what I need to do is to center it vertically, and then I want to right align it in this cell, and I'll be centering vertically for the other range as well. So I center it vertically up and down, but I keep the horizontal alignment unchanged. The issue is, why did I use letter Y? And let me tell you a few things. 
What if you want to insert a symbol? What do you do in this case? If you want to insert a symbol, we go to the Insert tab of the ribbon and we click to the very right on Symbols. And if you click on Symbols, you open this dialog box and it has lots of symbols. You can change the font type. Let's say I'm selecting this font and I have a set of symbols. If I change the font, I'm getting a different set of symbols. What if I select, let's say, Arial? If I go to the top and I select a common font like, let's say, Calibri or Arial, if I select Calibri and let's say I select letter Y, it's in this column, it's the middle one in this column. So this is letter Y. What if I change the font? because symbols are related to fonts and there are three fonts that are rich in symbols all of them starts with letter w so what if i change the font and instead of calibri i say i want to use webdings so if i click webdings and look at the other fonts webdings wingdings wingdings 2 wingdings 3 what if i select webdings look at the symbol now it becomes a heart the same letter y becomes a heart so the concept is simple let me go to the fonts worksheet and explain the concept. In column A, I type some characters, and I copied these characters to columns B, C, and D. Same exact characters, but in column A, I'm using Arial font. In column B, for the same exact characters, I'm using Webdings. For column C, I'm using Wingdings. And for column D, I'm using Wingdings too. If you scroll down, read the character in column A and look at the corresponding icon that will appear if you change the font type. And let me scroll down to letter Y and here is the capital Y in column A. If I change the font type to Webdings, keep an eye on the formula bar. In the formula bar I see W and just by changing the font type to Webdings, I'm getting a heart and this is what I'm going to do. So I'll go back to my worksheet and I select the two ranges. I select the range in column D, having my if function, press control and select the range in column H and I want to change the font type. I go to the home tab, I bump it up to 16 and I say I want to change this font. I type letter W and from here I'm selecting Webdings. So I was able to change the repeated character Y on either side to a repeated heart. I can change the color as well. So if I go and change the color for these two columns, I want to make the color, let's say, red. And I can say for the negative side, I can change it to blue. You can reverse if you like. And I was able to create the first part of my chart. Note that the percentage you see in column E and column G and the hearts you see in column D and column H are all linked to the source data coming from the story worksheet. Which means, if I change the value in cell A2, and let's say 2018, then everything is dynamic and everything will change as well. If I go back to the love worksheet, look at this. All the bar charts represented by hearts have reflected the change I did in the story worksheet. That requires having two things, a dynamic label here at the top, so I know which year is represented in my Valentine's chart. And at the same time, I need a certain functionality to be able to switch the year instead of going every time to the story worksheet and modify it manually. So let's do that. I'll start by creating my dynamic title here at the top. At least I'm able to recognize which year is represented in my Valentine's chart. Remember that in the story worksheet we created a dynamic label in cell A1. I'm simply going to copy it. So I go to the love worksheet and I want to insert a text box. I go to the insert tab and say in the text group I want to create a text box. So I click and drag and create my text box. And this text box is simply getting a value from cell A1 in the story worksheet. So I put it in the edit mode by hitting the F2 key. My blinking cursor will appear in the formula bar. And then I type an equal sign and simply go to the story worksheet and click on cell A1. When I hit enter, I would have brought the title to the love worksheet. If you want, you can adjust it a little bit. So I can select it, bump it up, and I make it, let's say, size 20. I can even center it right and left and up and down. And if you wish, you can add a style to make it semi curved by going to the Format tab and click on the down arrow for text effects and select I would like to apply transformation. So I select 
this arch and when I apply it it's a little bit curved and that looks nice I can increase the curvature by dragging the lower middle handle I can also narrow it a little bit and that looks nice and I noticed that for my text box I have a fill color and I have an outline I want to get rid of both of them so on the format tab I click on the down arrow for shape fill and say I don't want a fill color and I don't want an outline shape outline no outline and that's fine if you wish you can move this text box a little bit down so that we can see it and now it looks nice it tells me these are the plush toys 2018 sales so if I go to the story worksheet this is 2018 but if I change this number in cell A2 in the story worksheet I change it to 2015 when I hit enter my chart should be dynamic because the calculation here is dynamic and when I go to the love worksheet now it says plush toys 2015 and the number of hearts reflect the selected year every time I need to go back and forth to the story worksheet to change the number I want to do that without having to switch sheets and that's the third part of our project adding a control to add a control you need to have the developer tab to the ribbon if you don't already have the developer tab so it's easy to add it by right clicking on any tab and select customize the ribbon and from the dialog box which pops up it's a famous dialog box the Excel options just check the box for developer and when you hit OK it will be added to the ribbon I don't need to do that because I already have it and in the controls group I need to add a special type of control called the spin button how to do this by clicking on the down arrow for the insert command and they have lots of controls when you hover over any one of them you can read the name of the control I'm adding a spin button active X control a spin button has two opposing arrows so if I click and drag I'm creating my spin button and it has two arrows right and left I want to make it small so that it doesn't impact my design when I click on the spin button nothing happens because it doesn't have any functionality yet so I need to set some properties and adjust it in a way that when I click on the right side it increases the year when I click on the left arrow it decreases the year and to do this make sure you are in design mode design mode is highlighted and click on properties in the properties dialog box I have a maximum box if you click and say the maximum year is 2018 that's based upon my source data and the minimum is 2014 all depends upon my source data so I set the maximum and minimum what I could do as well to improve my design is to change the color of my spin button when you click in the back color you have a down pointing arrow if you click on that you can change the color these are the system color they don't seem to show the red color that I'm looking for so if I click on palette I'll find the red color somewhere here I can also create custom colors if I want by right clicking and customizing one of the white squares but I'm going to select the red one and I'm done I hit OK and close now if I click outside I want to turn off the design mode in order to test now it says 2015 sales so if I close and then click on the right side nothing happens click on the left side nothing happens as well the reason for this is the year is changing inside the spin button but it doesn't go anywhere I want whenever I make a change in the spin button the change goes to cell A2 in the story worksheet and to do this I need to create a very simple code that says whenever I make a change to the spin button send the value of the spin button to cell A2 in the story worksheet to create this very simple code you need to switch back to design mode and now you are able to select the spin button one more time to create the code you can either click on view code you can right click and select view code but the easiest way to do that is to simply double click on the spin button while you are in design mode if you have never created a code in VBA you will see how easy it is how fun it is to create that code without any previous knowledge you'll be able to create this one double click on the spin button and here you go the name of this button is spin button one and because we call it an object oriented language I want to change the value of cell A2 which is in the story worksheet so in an object oriented language we mentioned the object followed by the method we mention a thing followed by an action and my thing my object is sheets open bracket 
I write the name in double quotation, and the name is story. That's the name of the worksheet in which I want to make the change. Where would you like to make the change? I want to make it in cell A2, and we call it range A2. We have different ways of calling cells. I'm going to use the keyword range. So range, double quote, A2, double quote, and close bracket. In the sheets story, in cell A2, range A2, what would you like to do? Well, I want to change the value, so I type dot value. What will be the value? I type an equal sign. I want to get the value that comes from the spin button, so I type spin button one dot value. What does it mean? It means whenever you have a change in the value of the spin button, it should be communicated to cell A2 in the story worksheet, and we are done. I want to go back to Excel and test, so here to the left side of the toolbar, I can click on the Excel icon and I'll be able to test it. Remember, I'm in design mode, so I have to turn it off by clicking on design mode. And now let's test and see how it works. So if I click on the right pointing arrow, now everything is working, so I can see Plush Toys 2016, my chart is dynamic, so if I click one more time, this is 2017, if I click one more time, that's the maximum 2018, I can go back by clicking on the left pointing arrow 2017, 16, 15, and 14, so my spin button is working just fine. Now, it's the fourth part of this project, to create a teddy bear pictures catalog. And this company is selling plush toys. On Valentine's Day, they sell lots of teddy bears. I want to be able to bring the pictures catalog somewhere on this worksheet. So let's see how we build a pictures catalog by using a combination of functions. I'll go to the teddy worksheet and show you what we do. I already prepared for this step and to save some time, I downloaded some pictures of teddy bears from the internet and then I went to the insert tab and inserted this picture. I resized each picture so that it fits inside one cell. I expanded the cells in row number one, and because I have five pictures, I expanded the columns from A to E. So in each cell, you will note that I have a picture. I select the picture, it's just fitting and centered inside that cell, cell A1. If I select cell B1, I have a picture fitting in cell B1. So in order to be able to create my pictures catalog, I need to do a few things. The first thing I need to do is to name each picture and name the containing cell. And I'll be using for the five pictures the names you see in this range from cell A3 down to cell B7. So let's get started. I select my first teddy bear and I want to name this one Blue Bear. How do I name it? By clicking in the formula bar and I'll be typing Blue Bear. Don't forget to hit enter for the name to stick. I'll select the second one and I want to name it Noti, so I put my blinking cursor in the name box and I type. And don't forget to hit enter. I'll be doing the same exact thing for the other pictures as well. I finished naming the five pictures. This is the sleeping bear. Now I need to move to the next step, naming the containing cell. And to name the containing cell, I need to define a name for each cell. And to define a name, I can always go to the formula tab and click on define name. You can also use the shortcut, Control alt f3, and it will open the name box. I'll be typing blue bear, the same exact name, and then I hit enter. I hit my right arrow to move to the next cell, Control alt f3, and then I'll be typing noti. I named the five pictures and I named the five cells in which the pictures are sitting. I used the names in column B. I would like to be able to extract a picture by using a VLOOKUP function that looks at a certain cell, which means if I type in a cell number one, I want to extract the blue bear. If I type number three, I want to be able to extract the loving bear. Let's see how we do that. I'll go back to my worksheet. And let's say, as a test, I'm going to select cell A1, and I'll be typing 2. 2 corresponds to the Naughty Bear, and I would like to create a function that extracts the Naughty Bear picture. So this function is a VLOOKUP function. So I select any cell, and in this cell I start typing a VLOOKUP function equal VLOOKUP. What are you looking for? I'm looking for this number available in cell A1. 
I hit comma. Where do you look for it? What's your table array? My table array is in the Teddy worksheet, so I click on Teddy and select the range. I'm selecting that range, and I continue building my function here in the formula bar. I hit comma. I need a return value. My column index number is in column 2, so I type 2, and then I hit comma. I need an exact match. Exact means false. In computer language, false means 0. So if I type a 0 and close the bracket, when I hit enter, it should extract the value from the second column corresponding to the number in cell A1, which is right now number 2, which means I need to extract the naughty picture. When I hit enter, look at that. The VLOOKUP function is returning the text naughty. That's not what I want. I need the picture naughty. And to do this, I need to save my VLOOKUP function as a defined name. Let me show you how to do this. I'm going to delete this function and recreate it somewhere else in the Define Name dialog box. On the Formulas tab, I click on Define Name. In this dialog box, I'll be giving a name to my function. Let's call it Bring It. And then, for the refers to, I'll be creating my VLOOKUP function. By the way, I can increase the size of my box. I can make it bigger, like this. And I'll start creating my VLOOKUP function. Here in this dialog box, I don't get the help of the intelligence list. You should be familiar with the arguments of the function you create. Equal V lookup. And then I open bracket. And then I say my lookup value will be whatever comes from cell A1 in the love worksheet. And then I hit comma. What's your table array? My table array is in the Teddy worksheet. And I select the entire range. And then I hit another comma. The next argument is the column index number, and my column index number is 2 because I need a return value from column 2. I need an exact match, so I type comma and 0, and then close the bracket for my VLOOKUP function. You know, when I created this VLOOKUP function a few seconds ago, it returned just the text. But I want to tell Excel, you know what, I don't mean the text, I indirectly mean a named range. So I'm going to include all this VLOOKUP function in another function that will tell Excel that we are indirectly looking at a named range. So I click before the VLOOKUP function and then type indirect. Open bracket. Don't forget to go to the very end and close the bracket for the indirect function and we would have created the named range. Now we want to bring our picture we want to bring our catalog, assuming that we have hundreds of teddy bears. I want to be able to see them here. And to see them here, I'll be inserting any regular picture, any picture you might have. So I go to the Insert tab, click on Illustration, and click on Pictures. From the Exercise folder, let's download any picture, and let it be this white polar bear. When I hit Insert, here is the picture that I just inserted. I want to position it in place. I can make it bigger if I wish. And it's not dynamic. It's not yet linked to my named range. I'm just resizing it, and I'm going to link it to my named range. To do this, I select my picture, hit the F2 key, and my blinking cursor appears in the formula bar, and I'll be typing an equal sign and the defined name that I created, which is bring it. So if I type BRI, now I can see it in the tooltip. I can hit the tab key, and when I hit enter, it will be bringing the corresponding picture. When I hit enter, this is the naughty picture, the second one. Let's test how dynamic it is. So if I type, let's say, 4, it's bringing the white picture. If I type 5, it's bringing another one. If I type 1, it's bringing the blue bear and my function is working. My picture catalog using the indirect and the VLOOKUP function is able to extract the corresponding picture. What I need to do right now, because when I select this picture, look at this, it has a fine border all around. I don't want to see this border. And that's easy to fix. I go to the Teddy worksheet, and then I say, for these cells, I don't want to see any border. So on the Home tab, I click on the down arrow and say, no border. And at the same time, I don't want to see the grid, so I click on the View tab and take the check away from grid lines. Now if I go to the Love Worksheet, the border is gone. Every time you want to change the picture, you have to change this number. So I'll be typing number 2 to bring a different picture, but that's not practical. I would like to create a function that randomly generates a number from 1 to 5. 
there are so many ways of doing this but because I want to be able to click on a picture and when I click on this picture the number in cell A1 changes randomly between 1 and 5 because I have 5 pictures then I'll be creating this function as a macro in VBA how to do this? Extremely simple. If you have never created a code in VBA, just follow me. It's just few words. To go to the Visual Basic Editor, I hit Alt F11, Alt F11, and here is the first code we created for the spin button. Just click below it, and then start typing a subprocedure. Any macro is called a subprocedure. Any code you write in VBA is generally a subprocedure. So I type sub and then I type a space. Give it a name and because this one is changing picture just to make it descriptive I'm going to call it change picture. You are not allowed to have spaces and when you hit enter the word sub will change to blue and opening and the closing bracket will be added and the end sub keyword will be added as well. Between the sub and end sub I need to create my code and my code is extremely simple. It's an object oriented language. I'm in the worksheet named love and I want to create in cell A1 error in between function. So I say sheets, open bracket, double quote, love. That's the name of the worksheet, double quote, close bracket, dot range, open bracket, double quote, A1, double quote, close bracket, sheets, love, dot range, A1, dot value, equals, what value would you like? Well, I want error in between. Well, I can create this code in so many ways, but I'm going to use the simplest technique to generate this code assuming that you don't have any experience with Visual Basic so I type in double quotation an equal sign and drain between that's the name of the function and then I open bracket for the end between the bottom is 1 and the top is 5 and I close the bracket for the end between and then other double quote and we are done see how simple it is sheets love dot range a1 dot value equals in double quote equal rent between 1 comma 5. Now I want to test my function, so I go to Excel. How in the world am I going to test this function? I need to attach it to a picture. When I create a macro, I can run it in so many ways, but I'm going to attach it to a picture. So let's bring a picture and attach this macro, change picture, to the picture that we'll be bringing. Insert. Click on the down arrow for illustration, and then click on picture. I want to bring a picture, let's bring this nice quote, Happy Valentine's Day. And then I hit insert, and when I bring this quote, I can make it, I can resize it, I can make it much smaller, and let's position it somewhere here. We want to attach the macro to it, so with the picture selected, I right click, and from the right click menu, I select Assign Macro. In the Assign Macro dialog box, I can see that macro, so I select it, change picture, and when I hit OK, that should do the work. Deselect the picture by clicking outside and when you hover over the picture there is a functionality because my mouse pointer changes to a pointing finger. When I click on this picture the sub procedure will be triggered, the subroutine will be triggered and it will generate a random number in cell A1 and because I have a defined name linked to this cell this defined name was created with an indirect and a VLOOKUP function and this defined name controls this picture so let's see how it works when I click a random number is generated in cell A1 the random number is 4 so then picture number 4 is returned let's click one more time and when I click right now I have number 2 the naughty picture is returned if I click another time that's number 4 number 5 that's number 3 it's random I have no control on the number return when it returns number 1 this is the blue bear so the functionality is fine the next step will be the last part of this project improving the appearance creating a background applying protection and testing that everything is working so I start this part by hiding this number from the view I want to change it instead of black I'll make it like a pink color because I'll be bringing a pink background and the next thing I want to move this logo to cover this one and if I move it I'll be triggering the macro how in the world can I select it I need to deactivate the macro or the subroutine attached to this picture so I press the control key and click and now I can move my picture up and down I can cover the number the next thing I want to do is to bring few other pictures I want to bring a picture that covers the spin button to make it look as part of the design 
I want to bring the company logo and I want to bring a background. So let's bring these pictures. I'll go to the insert tab, click on illustration, click on picture in your exercise folder. Let's bring this picture of hearts and when I hit insert, here it is. It's a huge picture. I want to resize it, so I drag it from one of the sizing handles to make it much smaller. And then I want to reverse it. I want to flip it horizontally. So on the format tab of the ribbon, I click on the down arrow for rotate and flip it horizontally. I want to move it somewhere in this position. When I move it to its final position after resizing, it's hiding the spin buttons. So I want to bring the spin buttons to the top. What I need to do is to send backward so when I click on the down arrow for send backward and select send to back, now I can select my spin button. I want to move the spin buttons on top of this heart, but you know, if I try to click to select it, I'm just changing the year, I'm just triggering the functionality of the spin buttons. So in order to move them, I need to go to the developer tab and make sure I'm in the design mode. When I click on design mode, now I'll be able to drag the spin buttons and position them on the heart so that it become part of the design. Don't forget to click on the design mode one more time to enable the functionality. Let's bring a logo for this company, the Plush Toys Company. So I click on the Insert tab, click on the down arrow for illustration, click on Pictures, and now I'll be bringing the Plush Toys logo. Click on Insert. Here is my picture. I want to position it in the upper right corner, resize it to make it a lot smaller, and then position it in its final place. You can always reposition and resize the teddy bear catalog picture until you reach the final layout. Now in order to bring the background, I need also to hide the grid lines. I go to the view tab of the ribbon and take the check away from grid lines. And then to bring the background, I go to page layout. And on the page layout, I click on background. And I added a background picture for you in the exercise folder. So you can click on this picture in pink having lots of hearts when I hit insert here is my design that looks nice the final thing we need to do is to apply some protection and to apply some protection that simply means no one will be able to edit or modify my design but you know if you apply protection you will be also including in your protection cell A1 because when you apply protection you go to the review tab of the ribbon and you click on protect sheet and let's read the text. What does it say? Protect sheet and contents of locked cells. Locked cells, what does it mean? It means all the cells of the worksheet. In any worksheet, you have 17,179,869,184 cells. That's the equivalent of 2 to the power of 34. So when you apply protection, you are protecting the 17 billion cells. So if I protect a cell, I won't be able to modify this cell, but remember that cell A1 is related to a certain macro that changes the content. What does it mean? It means if you protect the entire worksheet, including cell A1, the macro will fail and it will return an error. So what I need to do is to unprotect cell A1. And here it says protect worksheet and contents of locked cells. So let me hit cancel and prepare for the protection by unlocking cell A1. And to unlock cell A1, let me press Ctrl and move the logo away. And then I select cell A1. And to unlock it, I need to go to the Format Cell dialog box, Ctrl-1. And in the Format Cell dialog box, I click on the last tab, the rightmost tab, the Protection tab, and take the check away. Now the 17 billion cells are locked, with the exception of cell A1, which simply means if I go back to the Protect Worksheet and apply Protection, I'll be protecting the entire worksheet. Nothing can change with the exception of cell A1, which is the one required for triggering my macro or my subroutine. I need before applying protection, press Ctrl and select the shape, and then move it in its position one more time. After moving it in position, I can deselect it and then go to the Review tab, click on Protect Sheet, I want to protect the worksheet and contents of locked cells. Only A1 is not locked, so it's not protected. And at the same time, I don't want anyone to be able to click and select any cell, so I take the check away from select locked cells. The moment I hit OK, cell A1 will be selected because it's the only one that is not locked. When I hit OK, look at this, cell A1 is selected. That doesn't make a difference. I can test the functionality. If I try to click on any one of the cells, I cannot select it. I'm going to double click on the tab to reduce the height of the ribbon, to collapse my ribbon, 
and when I double click on a tab it collapses now this is my final design I want to test the functionality so I click on the right pointing arrow and then I click on the left pointing arrow look at that plush toys 2017 sales my chart is dynamic my chart is grabbing value from the story worksheet the spin buttons are controlling a cell in the story worksheet and accordingly the actual sales and the percentage difference change at the same time, should you wish to explore the company catalog, look at the different product, trigger the other macro that triggers the rand between function in cell A1, and when I click here, I'm changing the pictures for my catalog, and my project looks nice and is working dynamically. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe to be notified when new tutorials are posted. Remember, the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and happy Valentine's Day everyone.